Today on Great Technical, we're going to be looking at the ISKN Repaper. I have no idea how to pronounce that name, so I'm just going to call them Repaper from now on. The Repaper is a product that I had no idea what it was, and we were gifted it two years ago for Christmas. When researching the product, the company website explains the device as such. Grab your favorite pencil, slide on the Repaper ring, attach a sheet of paper to your tablet, and draw. And that is it. Coming in at just shy of $200, the Repaper is a lightweight product with an active drawing area of 8.5 by 5.5 inches, or in other words, a standard A5 size paper. I am a full-time art teacher, so I teach in public schools. I do draw quite frequently, and I make videos for my students to follow along with. This product does actually make sense for us. As the Repaper's First Step advert says, the focus behind the product is the ability to draw on paper and whatever you draw on the paper will be transferred to your compatible device. Additional promotional material I was able to find shows the ability to use the redraw to take notes or draw on and then whenever you are back in connection with your main device you can then connect your redraw to the device and upload whatever you took. At first I thought that this was just a gimmicky product offering nothing more than a standard non-display drawing tablet, which to be fair, it could be. The tablet comes with a pen that allows you to create drawings without paper, but by using it like this, you're missing the point of the product. You might as well save a hundred bucks and just get yourself a digital drawing tablet. But before we get into that, let's begin this review by looking at the packaging. The box and presentation are very nice, elegant, clean, and it unboxes way better than it should. It looks like you spent a thousand dollars on this product based just on the packaging alone. For comparison, I have here an iPad mini, something that costs three times more and from Apple, the company who prides itself in simplistic design and elegant customer experience. Just from the packaging aspect alone, Apple doesn't even compare to Repaper. Inside the package you will find the tablet itself, a pencil with a ring for drawing, the pen used to make the tablet into a standard drawing tablet, a sketchbook with paper, the tablet instructions, two clips with a safety warranty. I have to give the repaper props on making a killer first impression. While the packaging is nice, there is a noticeable lack of instructions. The instruction manual is there, but it is 10 pages of English that basically says get the app. Because the main selling point of this product is to incorporate the functionality and portability of paper instead of being a standard drawing tablet, I decided to install the app on my daily driver, a small Lenovo M8 tablet that I use for standard note taking. It's a small tablet with a small processor that cost me a whopping zero dollars. Yeah, this tablet is one of those freebies you get when you sign up for a health plan or a promo when you buy a new phone. I thought that the low power of this device and the fact that it is just at the bare bones minimum spec requirement for the repaper would make it a great device to benchmark test the product on. After all, if you're going to say that it runs on a potato, you better believe people are going to try to run it on a potato. I mean, I did. And sure enough, there it was. A quick download and I was off to the races almost. You connect the device through the app using Bluetooth. It takes your Bluetooth being on, obviously, but the device itself is locked if you're not using the app, which is fine. You don't want people to tamper with your product. I totally get that. But that also means that if you want to use a tablet like a standard drawing tablet, you must first connect it to the app, enable it in the drawing tablet for the other application, and then share the connection through the app to the other application. Or at least that's what I read online because I couldn't actually get this part to work. However, inside the app, the tablet picked up first try without an issue. Sadly though, it immediately died. So I left it on charge for a while, and when I came back, it took several tries of me closing the app and reopening it before the tablet would register again. 
the first time I loaded the app with the stylus, the tablet came up with an animation of the pen that actually startled me. Not very many applications can pick up the tilt, rotation, pressure, and angle of the writing pen, especially on a very low-end tablet like I was using. But it did it, and it did it flawlessly, and even showed me an animation of what the pen looked like when it was tilted. I always say it's important to make things fun and engaging for the user. There has to be some sort of splendor to the application, otherwise it just becomes a side product and you don't even think about it. I was really surprised when I started testing out the pressure sensitivity. From strong presses to small details, it actually felt like I was writing with a pencil. Another neat thing was the airbrush. You hold the pen like you would an airbrush. In all of my painting applications that I've used over the years, I've never seen one that did quite like that. And it replicated the feeling of using an actual airbrush, where you hold the pen off the paper to get a wider area, closer to the paper to get a more condensed area. The downside of this app is the settings. The settings are there, but you need to click and hold on the brush or pencil or whatever texture you're currently using in the app to edit the brush head and sensitivity. Some things are intuitive, like writing and drawing. Anything with pen and paper feels correct and it's seamless. While the other things like changing the settings or going into the menus, that's very cumbersome. Now, up to this point, all of this has been scripted. I'm going to be going off script because there's something that I want to test out with this. It boasts that you can use a pen with paper on the drawing tablet. Now, previously up to this point, I have only used the pen that came with it and I've been using it like a drawing tablet, like I said in the video. However, it says that you can use paper and I don't just want to use their standard paper because obviously you're going to be running out of paper eventually if you just use theirs. So instead, I'm going to be using my own art paper here, my sketchbook paper, and it's fairly thick. It is watercolor paper, and I want to test it out and see if it'll work on here. I also want to try out this pen ring or pencil ring because apparently you can use any pencil you want. Something else I want to test out is if you have longer lead on your pencil, like for instance, a lot of artists will shave their pencils down like this so they have longer lead. That means that they don't have to sharpen it as often. I want to see if the pen ring will still work on there like that. And if you flip it upside down, will it register the eraser if you have one? I'm curious about all that because I haven't seen anyone review these like that online. They've just been using the standard pencil, which is not always uh, valid if you are a regular drawing artist. So try that out. Okay, it's connecting. Draw. And this was the issue I was running into before with it connecting. If it says connection up at the top, it means it's not connected. You have to wait. Okay, so now, now that we're like 10 minutes in, you can see that it does actually pick that up. That, okay, that's pretty cool. Let's see if this reads. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so compare this with that. I can say it's not exact, but it is pretty close. Now, something I wanted to test is if we erase. Okay, so the eraser obviously does not work. You have to have the eraser tip on there. I would say if we brought this down maybe and then we went to the eraser okay there we go so we have to have it at a certain place so 
it does seem to work. Yeah, it's picking it up. It's a certain distance away from it. It looks like there's possibly a range for where it would work. Let's try and adjust the uh, brightness so it shows up okay. Now, if you wanted to change some of the settings on here, like I mentioned, you have to click on there and then you can change the settings around here. Change that back to off. Does that change anything on here? Actually, it kind of does. It assumes that your pencil is very sharp. Okay, that actually works better. Now, something that I hadn't mentioned yet, but I think is really neat, is you can actually have different layers on here. If you want to change the color of the layer to something else, you can do that. So, this drawing right here is just on the first layer, which is really neat. I'm going to change this paper out for a new paper. So, let's go up here to New. No, we don't want to save. We have a fresh paper, and I'm going to replace this Let's do an actual drawing. Going back to the script, I can say that the more I use this product, the more it makes sense. And at the same time, the more it doesn't make sense. When it works, it's amazing. But getting it to work every time without fail, that's an issue. Reliability simply isn't there. If you are, for instance, like me, an art teacher who records lessons and needs a visual aid for tutorials, this product is a game changer. I can see how this product will change my educational lectures, allowing me to draw demos on the spot and record them remotely without the use of a scanner or an elaborate setup with fancy recording devices like I've been using for years. The app allows you to record time lapses of the whole process, which was something I didn't discover until after I had done my initial recording. On the other hand, I would never use this product for notes, as it is too unreliable and cumbersome to set up and get working in a short amount of time. Adding to the fact that you will need to adjust the pen, eraser tool, and ring every time you want to erase if you're using a pencil makes it less than ideal for serious artworks that are going to be refined. Sketches, sure, but you need to keep in mind that you are basically using a pen instead of a pencil. The marks will be permanent unless you change the eraser tool, which makes the remote drawing aspect of the whole device pointless. Now, as far as shopping around on the market for competitors, that's a tough one to place. You see, this product is not really a note-taking device, although it could be. And it's not a standalone device, although it could be. And it's also not a non-display drawing tablet, although it could be. The device itself is just one of a kind. I think the product is good for what it is. It's not a replacement for paper. It's not a replacement for your current drawing tablet. And it's not a replacement for a digital painting application. If I would try to pitch this product to somebody, I would call it a bridge between analog drawing users and digital drawing users. I think this product is a helpful tool to get a hand-drawn work into a digital working environment. I personally hate using drawing tablets simply because it doesn't feel like paper. I am very much a person who enjoys the feel of pencil on paper. Drawing on glass, like drawing on a tablet or an iPad, just feels wrong. This product makes sense for me. If you're wanting a way to draw digitally, 
get a drawing tablet. They are anywhere between 20 bucks to $2,000, depending on what you want. This, one of the best ones that I've personally had, it costs around $100. It's definitely not the most expensive drawing tablet I've had. I've had some that went up to like $300 to $400. This one's probably one of the best ones that I've had, and it's roughly the same size as the repaper, but it's strictly for drawing digitally. Basically, you take the pen that's available, and it makes the pen into the mouse on your computer. That's it. It's got pressure sensitivity and stuff like that. If that's all you need, get one of these. Save yourself a hundred bucks. If you're wanting something to take digital notes on, you don't really have to spend much. Like I said, my daily driver right here, I bought a $10 pen, free tablet, use this, take notes on it. It's not that bad. But if you're a person who loves drawing on paper and needs the drawings to be digital for whatever reason, this product is for you. Just keep in mind, it doesn't always work and it's a pain to get working when it's not working. I would not rely on this product in a pinch. Honestly, with the price being at $200, I think it's in the market of where it needs to be at. I'd like it to be lowered a little bit because I think the functionality just isn't there, but it's in a niche area for a niche clientele. I can't really complain. Overall, I give the repaper an 80%. Most of that boils down to the lack of instructions and the app just being itself. Improving the app, ensuring reconnections over time, and allowing the ring to function as an eraser would set this product apart from everything else and would truly make it something to be considered by everyone who loves drawing. If these changes come around, I would love to review this product again, but sadly this product is not quite there yet. However, all the faults that I have said with this device so far is simply software. It's the app, that's it. And the app can be fixed with updates and patches. The product itself is solid. And if anybody from Repaper is watching, please fix the app. I actually hate that this product received an 80% on my score, but I understand why. I feel like that if the app was fixed, it would be in the high 90s easily. But I spent longer trying to get the dang thing to connect than I actually spent on the drawing for this video. I think I spent longer trying to get the thing to connect than I spent recording this video, like all of it. When it works, it's awesome. Getting it to work is not. Honestly, that should speak volumes to why it got an 80 when most of the time was spent trying to get it to work and it still got an 80. That's pretty good. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.